once you have set up your review project and invited the members of your review team to join the project on Covenants, you will be able to see that those people are now listed in the team setting section. And a lot of the way the team setting section works is that it will automatically be tracking work that your co-reviewers are doing and that the team is making in terms of contributions as a whole. Uh, and that will be happening automatically as people are carrying out those actions. So you can see that anyone who has been added to the review team has joined with their own individual user account and all the work that they're doing and contributions that they're making are being tracked through those individual accounts. You'll be able to see team progress up here in the top header bar uh, showing what the team is doing as a whole and you'll be able to see the individual contributions that each member of the team is making as they are voting on references that are moving through the screening process. And this, like most things in Covenants, is set up to minimize introduction of bias and maximize blinding. So you'll be able to see this type of aggregated information, but you won't be able to see which specific references anyone has voted on or how they voted on any particular reference. It's also possible on the team settings page to set some rules around what people can do. The default setting in Covenants is that any member of the team can carry out any action, but in this section it is possible to make some rules that are going to place some restrictions on who can do what. So for example, in the screening section, it is possible to set a rule that will designate that one or more members of the team must vote on every reference. This is uh, designed to work when the team is working in dual review or screening mode, meaning that two people are voting on every reference. And so by setting a rule here that one or more people has to vote on every reference, the system will manage that so that uh, if anyone who isn't on this list has voted on any reference, it will then only become visible to the people who are designated here so that one of the people that's been designated under this rule will cast the second vote on that reference. Similarly, the default setting is that any member of the review team can resolve conflicts, but by selecting one or more people to fulfill that role, it will then, the system will then only make it possible for those people to vote. So all members of the team will still be able to see the conflict resolution list when two members of the team have voted in conflict on specific references. They'll be visible to everyone on that list, but only the people who have been designated here will actually have voting buttons in order to be able to cast the third tie-breaking vote that will move that reference forward. So that's the, those are the primary actions that can be taken on the team settings page. The configuration of the full text review is similar in terms of displaying that information and allowing for the same type of rule setting to happen. The extraction section um, in 1.0 has the same settings, but in 2.0, if your review is set up for that, will not include that functionality. It will show you the team progress bar, but that is currently the only functionality that will be activated in 2.0.